Today is the day we have finally received our small tech router from Tormach and we're going to do a quick little unboxing for you. So uh, we'll get started. Once we open up the big box we can see we have three smaller boxes and they're so labeled. You should have box one that we would guess has the machine and all in it, um, box two which will have our larger things, and box three. So now let's start getting into each individual box. Alright, so inside box three um, we can see we first have our electronic tool setter. We have a bit kit, which I think is a 16 um, tool kit. We have our Ethernet cable. We have our waterproof um, keyboard. Uh, keep all the chips and everything on the keyboard. That's exciting. We have our e-stop, we have a USB hub for transferring information over to it, oh cool, we have a waterproof USB mouse, um, a small Allen wrench and screwdriver. And then we have, oh, the jog and shuttle control. All right, uh, let's take a little bit better look at box three. Um, I'm impressed, not only do we have an ethernet cable to be able to plug the machine directly in, um, but it looks like we also have a Wi-Fi module um, to be able to work wirelessly. Uh, we have quite a bit of tools we'll get to here in just a minute. We have our digital height gauge, which actually looks like it comes with a bracket uh, to mount it down to the bedway. Um, it appears that it's you know kind of indexes into here and there's a little allen wrench that it came with to um, kind of lock that into place and we have um, a usb hub that looks like it has four um, usb ports we have our emergency switch um, that looks like it has all the holes and everything to try to mount it somewhere um, i'm really impressed with both the mouse and the keyboard these appear to be almost um, hospital grade uh, mice and keyboard, so I'm really impressed with that, um, especially if that's the same ones that we'll get with the 440 and the 770 and all. Um, it's going to be really nice to try to keep chips and everything out. Um, and then really the big thing is the tools themselves. So let's let's kind of take a look at the tools. Um, so as you start organizing up your tools, um, it looks like you may have a lot of the same tool. Um, so if you start organizing them out by size, but if you truly look at it, they all have a different item number. Um, so each one of these tools is actually something a little bit different. So um, let's spend a little bit of time actually taking a look at the tools that we have. You can see here that we have quite a wide variety of different end mills, um, engravers, roughing end mills, some different diameters, different lengths. Uh, majority of them look like they're fairly high flute or high helix. Uh, most of them look like they're two flute. But we have quite a wide variety of individual end mills to be able to use inside the machine. Uh, All right, now that we've got box three completely unloaded and inventoried, um, time to move on to box two. Uh, so we've got our product warranty card, um, smart all-in-one touch computer series. I'm guessing this means it's the monitor. Um, so power cables. So here's everything from box two. Um, I gotta be honest, I'm extremely uh, impressed with the heft or the weight of the monitor. Um, the tilt seems to just be tension based. Uh, there is a protective screen that I'm gonna leave on there for right now, um, just to try to protect it a little bit. I may, may look at later if there's some kind of um, laptop or iPad screen or something that I can put on there just to try to protect that a little bit more. But I plan on leaving, leaving that protective coating on for a little bit. Um, we have our power brick, it looks like a pass-through cable, and our power cable. That's what's in box two. All right, and biggest, best box for last. Um, I know there's styrofoam inside and how it's trying to fit, so I think the best thing for me to do is going to be to lay it on its front. I'm going to open both ends, and then I'll try to push the machine um, up and out the front.
Now that I've got both ends open, I think I probably can just push it out through the bottom. Um, but what might be the easiest, I want to make sure that I don't damage anything and I can't see exactly everything inside it. Um, I think I'm just going to sit the box back on its bottom with the flaps open and just pull the cardboard right up and off the top. And there it is, our XS Tech router by Tormach. Um, if I had actually reached inside the box, there was a little piece of paper that said to put the box on the side, open it up, push it out. And now what we need to do is remove all the packing and everything inside um, that's been holding everything in place during shipping. Um, so we'll open up the lid. It says to remove the core graded fender. And then I have these two pieces that apparently were back there. Um, I have this piece in the back. And then it looks like we're supposed to physically just push the head um, over to the side um, so I can get this one out. Um, all the other ones seem to be fairly empty. Um, this box seems to have some inventory items in it. Uh, we have our step and strap clamps. We have some bolts. We have some collets. Uh, looks like we're running an ER11 system. So ER11 collets. And then it looks like wrenches for probably doing tool changes and collet changes. All right, I'm excited. Let's try to get this all plugged in and fired up. Um, I do like that it looks like there are um, handles on the side to be able to pick it up so we can look at the back of it. Um, we have the controller com or our ethernet cable plug in. I'm gonna try to do everything I can to hook this up by USB. Um, I have where the e-stop's gonna plug in that's protected right now. I have a fuse, um, my power port, and it looks like a pass-through and then the power on. So the pass-through must be um, what we're controlling our monitor by. So we'll go ahead and grab our pass-through cable. We'll grab our general power cable. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the cap protecting the e-stop and get that plugged in. Um, it is keyed, so it'll only go in one way. Uh, make sure you push it in all the way and then screw it down finger tight. And we should have, uh, looks like everything that we need. Um, how does the machine connect to the monitor? Oh, I see. Alright, if you were like me, you may be wondering where everything else plugs in. Um, it appears to all plug into the bottom of the monitor. So this really is the computer. Um, it has PathPilot already installed on it. So it looks like um, we should be able to use the barrel connector to plug straight into here. Um, these must be video outs, um, so the ability to go out to a larger monitor, which may be really nice if I'm trying to do some demonstrations and whatnot. Um, on an LCD projector. It then looks like we have four USB ports. Um, one of them looks like it's a powered USB 3 port. 
So that appears to be what our hub is going to go to. Um, so you want to make sure you have a blue connector on the end of your hub and that will plug in here. And then we've got a jog control which doesn't appear right now that it matters which one of the ports it's going to go into. So we'll plug in the jog port. Um, we'll go ahead and plug in the USB mouse. And we'll plug in the USB keyboard. All right, so last thing, um, I was mistaken earlier when I thought this was an ethernet cable to be able to connect to another computer. Um, this is how it will connect to the machine itself. So it must be the USB or the Wi-Fi piece that it has uh, must allow this machine to connect to the school's Wi-Fi so that I can transfer files directly to it. And then if that's the case, uh, I really don't need the USB hub at all. But um, we'll have to see how complicated that is. So I'll go ahead and take this end of the Ethernet and plug it directly into the back of the controller COM port. All right, let's get everything neat and organized, and we'll go from there. I'll see you in the next video.